Welcome to Razzball Radio on the Fantasy Sports Network. I'm your host, Nick Aposi, and guess where we are? Well, I guess you don't have to guess because right there, we're in Houston. That's right, the 32 and 32 and 32 rolls on, 32 drafts, 32 days, 32 cities. We are, of course, in Houston. We've already covered the Seahawks in Seattle, the Niners in San Francisco, the Raiders in Oakland, the Chargers in San Diego, the Cardinals in Phoenix, the Cowboys in Dallas, and now, of course, we're here where it's very appropriate. By the way, just in case you didn't know this, Houston is very, very humid. All right, let's go inside. We are going to talk Houston Texans. We're going to talk fantasy football. Here we go. Hey, it's Nick, and welcome back to Razzball Radio on the Fantasy Sports Network. This is day number two in Texas. We made it through Dallas. I am now here in Houston, and tomorrow we're heading off to New Orleans. So we're going to have a good time here. This is draft number seven. I have been through seven states. I am at like 4,600 and something miles. It's been absolutely bananas. I have had over 18 meals that included bacon. So, you know, forgive me if I'm a little, you know, all over the place today because it's been a crazy, crazy road trip. When I get to the East Coast, it's going to be a little bit closer, but, man, we have been chewing up some asphalt. All right, let's get to some news and notes that have been happening around the league. I actually got into Houston early today, so I was able to sit down and watch replays of a couple of games. So I came up with a couple notes looking for some fantasy value in these games. Now, it's the preseason, absolutely. I'm not trying to tell you that it's not, but there are some subtle indicators that you're still going to pull out of this time of year. So... First game I got to watch was the Jaguars and Buccaneers, or Jaguars, depending on where you're from. So did the Jags look that good in the game, or did the Bucs look that bad? I think it's somewhere in the middle. One thing you have to remember with Jacksonville is that's a young, emerging defense. That defensive line is oozing upside, and they drafted five secondary players, five defensive backs, two years ago. So they have been stockpiling talent on that end of the ball, and it's starting to pay dividends. Gus Bradley's got them psyched. They're playing some Seahawks-style style defense, and it looked, you know, the made the Bucks, Bucks look absolutely terrible. So here's the thing. I'm going to throw this out there. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. Don't look at me like I'm sleep-deprived, which I currently am. The Jags actually might be a sleeper defense this year. That's right. I said it. And I'll even throw this out. I think there's a pretty good chance they might make the playoffs, which seems kind of nuts, but it's not, especially, too, if you go to Vegas, 100 bucks will win you 1200 if the Jags do sneak into the playoffs. And you know what? Not the best division of football, so there's some upside there in that play. Blake Bortles in that game also looked pretty good. He went 7 for 11 for 117 yards. I think that's right. There we go. Yep. Also looked really good on a read option. He's actually pretty mobile. I don't know that he's going to be effective this year beyond two QB leagues. I do think there'll be a chance, unless the Jags are, are really in playoff contention and Henny's managing the game for them. I think we will see Bortles at some point this year. But you know what? He is a really interesting play in Dynasty League, so don't ignore him. Did a rookie draft uh, for Dynasty League a couple days ago, and he was actually the last player picked uh, 14th overall in the second round. So definitely some upside there, but he did go after Bridgewater, and he did go after Johnny Manziel. Okay, what happened, though, to the Buccaneers? Well, you know what that is? That is a very good question. I'm, I'm worried about them. Uh, Lovey Smith is a great head coach. He'll keep that defense tight, but the offense looked terrible. I, they just couldn't move the ball against that Jacksonville team. Uh, especially to Denard Robinson had that nice end around. He's a guy to keep an eye on to put him on your watch list. But the Bucks, at this point, the way that they're playing, I am concerned about the offense. So I have to devalue their wide receivers. I got to drop Vincent Jackson down a couple spots. I'm not big on Mike Evans this year because I don't typically invest in rookie receivers. But he's also got to go down a couple of pegs because I just don't think that they're going to have the opportunity to move the ball properly on the offensive side of the ball. Now, defensively, again, I think they're going to be pretty good. Might even be another sleeper defense right there, the Buccos for you. But again, on offense, instead of Vincent Jackson, I'd rather have Pierre Garçon or Roddy White or even Michael Floyd, actually, especially Michael Floyd. So I'm not touching VJAX right now. I'm not touching Mike Evans. Yeah, they'll be great red zone presences. But when are they going to get to the red zone? Try saying presences three times fast. Presences, presences, presences. Uh, again, yeah, Denard uh, Robinson also looking good in that game. Okay. Next game I got to watch was the Cardinals and the Texans. Hey, we're in Houston. We're going to get to a Texans team report real soon. But this game was also interesting because the Texans looked terrible. Don't get mad at me, people in the bar. 
Texans did look absolutely terrible, and the cards look pretty good. Uh, I did pick up Houston's defense in a couple leagues this year. I figure you look, with Clowney, with Watt, they have to have some sort of impact, but you know what? The defensive backs did not look very good. In fact, I'm starting to worry about that defense, and the offense is a whole other story, and it is nothing good. Ryan Fitzpatrick, I think, is going to be a disaster this year. I am not touching Andre Johnson. I, oh, I want to grab DeAndre Hopkins. I really do. And when I say grab, I mean in a draft. Don't take it the wrong way. Again, I'm sleep deprived. I'm not crazy about the options on offense this year. You know what? Last year, DeAndre Hopkins had 52 catches, 800-ish yards. Maybe he's going to do 60, 100 this year because I just see them having trouble moving the ball. Another interesting thing uh, out of the Titans game as well is that Arian Foster obviously is the number one running back, but you know what? Look at the injury history. Even without that, last year, the way they moved the ball with Case Keenum, who, by the way, might get some burn this year. I got a feeling he might take over at some point for Fitzpatrick. But when he was healthy in the eight games he played, he was on pace for 1,500 total yards and only four touchdowns. This guy is not a first-rounder. Quite frankly, he's not a second-rounder, not with that type of injury risk. Andre Brown now, apparently, they're saying that he is falling down the depth chart. But you know what? I'm not buying that for the simple reason that they don't have anyone behind them. They've got, you know, who? I, look, there's like no one here even. I don't even see anyone on this list. So if Arian Foster gets hurt, Andre Brown is the get there. Remember, he had eight touchdowns a couple of years ago with the Giants, so he knows how to find the end zone. He might actually be, and again, maybe I'm crazy and sleep deprived, but he might actually be the most potentially impactful fantasy player if Foster gets hurt and if the offense is as you know, rough around the edges as I think it might be. Now, again, I'm just giving you some off-the-cuff stuff. <laughs> Trust me, we got plenty of shows over 32 straight days, so I'm sure I have to watch the next Texans game. We'll have some new assessments. But as it stands right now, if I'm drafting today, oh, wait, I am. I'm not touching any of those guys. Absolutely. Uh, another thing I saw was Logan Thomas. This guy was a fourth-round pick by the Arizona Cardinals, really interesting player. He is big, and I mean Dante Culpepper big. He's got some wheels, too. He's 6'6", 250, slid in the draft because he had all the physical tools, but it never quite worked in college. But you know what? Look, he's a project. There is no question. But in Dynasty Leagues, he's interesting. Logan Thomas had a great day yesterday. He went 11 for 12, 113 yards, got out of trouble, threw a nice little touchdown, just keep him, keep, uh, 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 remember that name, Logan Thomas. Okay, we're at the Houston Texans Grill. This is actually their private press box. This is where you can come and have your own draft. So if you're in Texas, if you're in Houston, wherever you are, just fly in here. This is, this is actually a really cool spot. Okay, we'll be back with more news and notes. We're going to be back with getting deeper into the Texans. This is Razzball Radio, Fantasy Sports Network. We'll be right back. I was never one for traditional dating, which is why I like to meet guys on ArrangementFinders.com. Arrangement Finders puts a twist on dating that works so well, they guarantee you'll find a girl. That's right, guarantee. Sounds too good to be true? Check out these girls on ArrangementFinders.com who are looking to date. She's hot. She's hot. Okay, her, <laughs> not so much. Anyway, it's free to join. Go to Arrangement Finders and meet girls like me who know what you really want. Welcome back to Razzball Radio and Fantasy Sports Network. I'm still here in Houston. I'm actually now on the back patio at the Houston Texans Grill. This is the spot in Houston that you want to do your draft. So I was going over some observations from some of the games I was able to catch up on before we went to break, and I'm going to continue that. So one more quick note in the Cards-Texans game. Or actually, a couple quick notes here. Uh, super speedy Josh Brown out of Pittsburgh State, third-round pick by the Cardinals, has looked really good in camp, and he went 5 for 87. Now, mind you, of course, against second and third string defenses, so keep it in check to some degree. But nonetheless, Dynasty Leagues, you want to grab this guy, and he might even be fantasy relevant this year. Again, I think the Arizona Cardinals have a good shot at having a good offense this year, so we might see a little bit more of Josh Brown than you might uh, be considering right now. I hope I don't get struck by lightning, because that would be inconvenient for the tour, although I'm sure I'm fine back here. Hey, did I mention before that Ryan Fitzpatrick looked awful? Because he did. He did. I don't even want to get to the Texans' uh, team report because it's going to be ugly. Okay. Also got to take a peek at the Packers-Titans game. Now, this was actually an interesting game because 
it, it was flooding. I mean, it was coming down in sheets. You think it's going to rain in Houston tonight? It was definitely raining during that game. Uh, one guy that I observed, and we don't talk offensive linemen very often in fantasy, obviously, but first-round pick Taylor Lewin looked fantastic for the Titans, and that bodes well for that offense. If Locker can stay on his feet, he's got the chance to be somewhat productive. So what else did we see there? Well, you know what? The line play, it was a key because Bishop Sankey looked great. Woo! Holy cow. I don't know if you heard that, but uh, is this? I, I thought Thunder was in Oklahoma City. This is Houston, people. Come on. All right, so Bishop Sankey, he, he was okay on the ground. He went 13 for 37, but he did have three catches for 38 yards and a touchdown, and Ken Wisenhunt was all over him after the game saying, this guy is pro-ready. Now, if you're in a dynasty league, I'd rather have Carlos Hyde number one for the long term. Yes, Sankey's going to be valuable this year, but I saw him go in the third round yesterday, which was absolutely bananas. So I am not that high on him, but he definitely looked good. James Stark had a pretty nice day. He had a touchdown run. If Lacey gets hurt, Stark is obviously the guy that you want in Green Bay. And look, it's not like Eddie Lacey's never been hurt before. It's happened, so it could happen again. So just keep in mind, if you are an Eddie Lacey owner, I'm not saying to necessarily handcuff, but definitely worth the watch list. He wasn't great when he had opportunities before, but you know what? He can be serviceable, and if Rodgers is back and healthy, it's just going to open up running lanes. So keep that in mind. Another thing to keep in mind was rookie Devonta Adams muffed two punts in that game. He's out of Fresno State. Now, of course, the weather had a, um, something to do with it, but I'm seeing Adams actually getting drafted this year. If he can't hold on to the football, rain or not, he's not going to get any burn. He's not going to get any playing time. So let's move on from him. Okay, Bills and Panthers. This was a game I really wanted to see because, A, I wanted to see Sammy Watkins. B, I wanted to see Calvin Benjamin. And you know what? They both delivered. Okay, it wasn't huge games for either one, but I saw what I was looking for, which made me happy. All right, first of all, Sammy Watkins, he only went three for 21, but they were looking for him. They were getting the ball into his hands. And for him to be successful that this year, that is absolutely going to be critical. They've got to get him into space. They've got to find him. Now, I've been stumping E.J. Manuel for a while, and you know what? I'm starting to think that maybe, maybe he's not the best bat anymore. Okay, you know what? He's not doing very good right now. But if he can get the ball into Sammy Watkins' hands, Sammy Watkins could do well. And that's really the key in this scenario. Holy cow, that's a lot of lightning. Woo! Kelvin Benjamin, rookie wide receiver. They said he was raw coming in. And you know what? He is raw. But holy cow, he only had one catch. It was a 29-yard touchdown uh, reception. But if you want to see the upside of this guy, not only he came burning down the sideline, stumbled at the five-yard line, recouped, and then used these massive long arms he has. This guy's got like Kevin Durant long arms and actually went under the ball, pulled it in, fair cat. It was, oh, it was really a beautiful touchdown. If he can do that even a little bit, or if he can be the threat to do that, even a little bit it bodes so well for cam newton cam newton's been falling down people's draft boards that's not really fair they're blaming it on the wide receivers he was a top five quarterback the last two years why is he going 12th or even 14th right now you know what kelvin benjamin he could help switch that up and you know what he's a rookie so there'll be ups and downs but go ahead go watch that catch kelvin benjamin versus the tie, um the bills that was beautiful okay what else we got panthers d look tight that is a legit top five defense no question in my mind you know what too i everyone's picking the seahawks the first two defenses we're seeing right now in all these drafts seahawks number one san fran number two i think san fran's actually better than seattle this year but i'll tell you i wouldn't be surprised if carolina has the top defense as well now even though defense looked pretty good buffalo was still able to run the ball a little bit and bryce brown was key in that now bryce brown is currently not getting drafted but you know what he is a very skilled running back this guy's got an interesting backstory. You should Google it sometime. We know I'm watching Rasball already on the Fantasy Sports Network. Real interesting guy. They didn't spend a fourth round pick to bring him in for nothing. Sure, Spiller could get hurt. Sure, Fred Jackson could get hurt. But Bryce Brown, if given the opportunity, he could never get ahead of McCoy in Philadelphia. And I'm not saying that talent wise, he's more talented than Spiller. But if he can hold on to the ball and one of the other running backs gets hurt, he could be a real. Uh, interesting guy going forward. Okay, some more some quick notes here. Man, I still got a lot of notes. I finally got to watch some football. Thank goodness. Eagles Bears high scoring game, exactly what you'd expect from those two teams. Nick Foles threw a couple ducks. Two interceptions, matches his total from all of last year. Obviously he's not gonna repeat that. But Jay Cutler looks sharp. And if he's healthy, this is a guy. He went in the 13th round yesterday in the Dallas draft. That is absolutely ludicrous. He was nine for 13 for 85 yards, had a zippy little touchdown to Zach Miller. 
also on the Philadelphia side of the ball, tight end Zach Ertz looked really good, four for 60. You know what? I think there's going to be a big year brewing for Mr. Ertz this year in the city of brotherly love. Okay, if LaShawn McCoy were to get hurt, touch wood, not going to happen. But if he did, Polk is the guy you want there. But I will say this, Matthew Tucker looked really good in that game as well. Again, second and third string defenses, but eight for 40, two touchdowns, battled into the end zone. This is a guy that might creep some touchdowns, whether it's from McCoy or not. So keep that name in mind, Matthew Tucker, when you're looking for some bye week fill-ins. Man, I got more notes to go over here. I don't have time. We got to go. All right, don't forget, guys, if you're playing fantasy football, you want to lock up your league fees for free. You do that at sportsfault.net. Play DraftKings with us. We're going to be playing every Sunday. Enter promo code RASBALL when signing up. I'm Nick Capozzi. This is RASBALL Radio on Fantasy Sports Network. I will be back from Houston as long as I don't construct by lightning. I was never one for traditional dating, which is why I like to meet guys on ArrangementFinders.com. Arrangement Finders puts a twist on dating that works so well, they guarantee you'll find a girl. That's right, guarantee. Sounds too good to be true? Check out these girls on ArrangementFinders.com who are looking to date. She's hot. She's hot. Okay, her, <laughs> not so much. Anyway, it's free to join. Go to Arrangement Finders and meet girls like me who know what you really want. Hey, welcome back to Razzball Radio on the Fantasy Sports Network. I am getting pelted by a storm. It is pouring here. And you know what? I think that's the kind of year that the Texans are actually going to have. So we're going to go through the Texans team report. But this is ugly. I don't even know if we want to talk about the Texans. And I feel bad saying that because I'm in Houston, but that's where I got to do the team report. What do you want from me, Houston? All right, so here we go. Um, let's start off with the quarterback situation. Obviously, as I've mentioned multiple times, Ryan Fitzpatrick is a disaster. I don't want anything to do with Ryan Fitzpatrick, and he's bringing down the value of everyone else. You might see Case Keenum this year. Yeah, you might. And that is going to – it has to devalue the wide receivers. So let's get into them because I don't want to talk about Fitzpatrick anymore. It's making me angry and upset. I need a beer soon. A lot of, a lot of beer necessary on this road. Okay. Oh, you brought me a beer. Holy cow. Come on over. This is Allison from the St. Arnold – sorry, I plead even closer over to me. <laughs> Allison, you're from the St. Arnold Brewing Company? Yes, I am. We are Texas's oldest craft brewery. We just celebrated our 20th anniversary on June 9th of this year. So we're almost old enough to drink. It's very exciting. She brought me a beer. That's, oh, that's fantastic. Okay, I can't drink it on the air. Maybe we're going to have to sign off in a couple of minutes. How do you think the Texans are going to do this year? The Texans are kind of breaking my heart right now, but I'm really excited to see how they progress after preseason. That's for sure. So now, St. Arnold, is this only in Texas or is this in other states? No, right now we actually are in Texas, Louisiana, and Florida, but we primarily sell the, the majority of Houston. Okay, so guys, when you come to Houston, you want to come to the Houston Texans Grill to do your draft, and then you want to have a St. Arnold beer. This is the uh, lawnmower? That's correct. This is our lawnmower. It's one of our most popular year-round beers that we have. It's a German Kolsch style, so it's really light and refreshing for the Houston 100-degree days that we have, but still a very full-bodied beer where you're – going to actually enjoy what you're drinking. Allison, my notes are flying over the place. I'm thirsty. You know what we're going to do? I'm, thank you very much for, very for coming welcome. out. I am going to bang out the rest of this team report, which is going to be really really quick because, again, it's Houston. And then, uh, you know what, maybe I'll get to sip on that beer. Thanks for joining us yeah, today. Okay, so back to the Texans. So wide receiver-wise, Andre Johnson right now is going in the fourth round. That is a mistake. Don't do that. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, I want DeAndre Hopkins. I love the upside, but not in the situation that he's in this year. It's messy. It's so messy. Okay, back to the running backs. Arian Foster, again, messy. What is there to like about this team other than Clowney and Watt? What? What is there to like? I'm really concerned. You know, what are the odds, actually, that the – you know what? I think it's like uh, $25,000 $25, play for uh, the Texans to, uh, to uh, finish worst in the league, and that could actually happen. Okay, again, I've been stumping Andre Brown. He got drafted last night in the league that we drafted in out over in Dallas. Again, great guy to go and get if you have Foster. Great guy to go and get because he might vulture some t TDs. There's no one else back there. You got Dennis Johnson, but he's a scat back. He's not a guy who's going to get a lot of play. So, you know what, just move on from that whole situation. The one point of interest, the one shining light in Houston might be Garrett Graham, the tight end. And you know what? I liked them last year. 50 ish caches, 500 ish yards, five touchdowns. You know what? That's an interesting player, developing player, young guy. He's getting older, more mature. Holy cow, it's pouring. 
They should have called this team the Houston Hurricanes. Sweet mother of goodness. Okay. Uh, but you know what? I can't. I can't say draft Garrett Graham. He's currently the 22nd tight end off the board because, again, the offense is going to be a disaster. So the takeaway here, if you live in Houston, get ready for the Rockets season because it might be an ugly season for the Texans. What else can I tell you? I got to have a sugar daddy. Sugar daddy of the day, of course, brought to you by arrangementfinders.com. But you know what? I can't find a sugar daddy out of this list. I might have to go to another team to find a sugar daddy. I really do. You know what? Okay. Here's what I'll say. My sugar daddy. The player who will dramatically outperform his ADP is actually going to be DeAndre Hopkins. And the reason is, last year, 52 catches, 800-plus yards, only two touchdowns. He is a player. He is legit. He is real. And even with this offense struggling, listen, Josh Gordon was the second-leading receiver in football last year. If it wasn't for the suspension, he would have been the top-leading receiver. And he did that with, you know, the quarterback play they had in Cleveland. So DeAndre Hopkins is good enough to possibly outperform his ADP. And right now, his ADP, is going around 6th, 7th round, but in drafts with, you know, where you guys are actually drafting, he's going much later than that. I'm seeing him go in the ninth, 10th, even 11th round. So based on that, I'm going to say DeAndre Hopkins. Okay, listen, side note too, little Razzball Radio housekeeping. I really appreciate you guys hanging out and watching these shows with me. Um, the next couple days, I will still be on my own, so it's a little bit nutty. But soon we're going to be picking up, guys. We're going to have uh, Smokey, Rob uh, Langevin, is going to be joining us for about two weeks on the tour. Sky's going to be coming back and joining us. We had some logistics issues, but we are on schedule. 32 drafts, 32 days, 32 NFL cities. Okay. So uh, don't forget, you can get all your rankings report at Raswell.com. Click on the football icon. You can follow me on Twitter at Nick Capozzi, N-I-C-K-C-A-P-O-Z-Z-I. -Z -Z and you know what? Houston, actually, I got to give Houston credit. Other than this hurricane that is slowly coming in, this is actually a really cool city. So, you know what? If you get a chance, come back here. Uh, eventually, the Astros are going to get good. You know, the Rockets are pretty good. It's just not going to be this year for the Texans. I'm telling you. Look at that. Plus uh, 2,500 on the Texans being the worst team in football. Okay. I have had a long day. I don't know if you can tell, but I have had a long day. So, I am very soon... As soon as we sign off, because I can't drink beer on the air, going to have a long sip of this beautiful St. Arnold beer. All right. This is Razzball Radio, Fantasy Sports Network. Thanks for joining me. We keep going. New Orleans tomorrow. It doesn't end. It never ends. Oh, my goodness. What's going on? The storm's coming. Where's my beer? Love you. Razzball Radio, Fantasy Sports Network. See you later, guys.